I started this project planning on just making my buddy Nick of the channel Build Dad Build a custom branded leather wrapped flask as a gift. But when I saw that I could get two flasks for almost the exact same price as one on Amazon, I decided to make my own branded version too. And this is how I did it. Let's get to it. To keep it on brand for Nick, I decided to use black leather with red stitching. So I started by cutting a black piece of leather to size, which for these flasks is 4.5 inches tall by 8.5 inches wide. For mine, I went with my go-to bourbon colored leather because, well, it just seemed appropriate for some reason. Next, I used my Cricut Maker to engrave Nick's logo onto the center of the leather. The engraving on the black is pretty subtle, but I kind of like it for some reason. For mine, I decided I wanted to leave my branding pretty simple, so I used my leather stamp and an arbor press to deboss my logo on the front. Next, I wanted to add some decorative stitching to the top and the bottom. I started by using my wing dividers to score a stitch line. Then I used my pricking irons to punch the stitching holes. To ensure the spacing between each hole stays consistent as I work my way down the line, I always make sure to place the stitching chisel point furthest to the left in the last hole of the previous set of holes I punched. I'm also going to be using some stitching to connect the two edges where they meet in the back, so I punch those holes at the same time. With all the stitching holes punched, I moved on to the stitching. I made a video dedicated to leather stitching, where I go in-depth into the process of how to do this saddle stitch and others, and I'll leave a link above in case you want to check it out. But at a high level, what I found is easiest is to just pick a sequence and stick to that. For example, I always start by using my right needle to stitch from the back, and then stitch the left needle from the front into the same hole, but in front and under the right needle's thread. If you continue this sequence, you'll get a very nice looking stitch pattern in my experience. With the decorative stitching done on both, I moved on to attaching the leather to the flask. I started by taping off the top and bottom edges of the flask to avoid the risk of applying adhesive where the leather won't be covering. To attach the leather to the flask, I used some Tandy Leathers Eco Weld adhesive. Eco Weld is super easy to use. You simply apply some to both surfaces, wait for them to get tacky, and then stick them together. Once the adhesive was tacky, I carefully aligned the piece of leather in the vertical and horizontal center of the flask and then pressed them together. Once the front was attached, I flipped it over and carefully wrapped each side around the flask, making sure to keep everything evenly spaced between the top and the bottom. I really stretched the leather as I did this to make sure that the two edges would just barely touch where they met in the middle. This will make more sense later, but for the second one I left a small strip at each edge without adhesive to make the stitching easier. To connect the two edges and pull everything tight I use what's called a corset stitch, which I also go more in depth into how to do the stitch in my stitching video. But at a high level I start with two needles secured at opposite ends of the same thread. Then with the top of the flask pointed at you I take the left needle and stitch down into the next hole on the right and then back up through the hole parallel to that one on the left side. That creates one half of the cross. Then do the same thing with the right needle, only opposite. Down through the hole on the left side and then back up through the parallel hole on the right side, completing the cross. And then pull both threads tight. Then just continue this pattern all the way down, making sure to pull it tight after each cross. To finish it, I stitch a loop across the last two holes and then tie a small knot on each side of that loop. Then I cut the thread as close as possible to those knots and then use a lighter to singe the extra thread and kind of push the knot into the hole. As I mentioned earlier, I didn't leave that small strip at each edge without adhesive on Nyx, which resulted in me having to pull the edges up slightly to do the stitching. This unfortunately led to the leather on the back pulling away from the flask. Probably not the best fix, but I decided to use some black CA glue to carefully reattach it. I just squirted a little bit underneath the leather, making sure not to get any close to the bottom or top edge, and then I just held it down until the CA glue cured. The flasks were essentially done at this point, but to add a little more unnecessary branding, I decided to sand etch my logo onto the cap. I simply cut my logo out on some vinyl using my Cricut, centered it on the cap, and then masked everything else off with blue tape. 
Then I used an inexpensive sand etching kit I got off of Amazon and my homemade spray booth to sand etch it onto each cap. There's something super satisfying about taking off the stencil and seeing that logo really pop. And with that, the flasks are done. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe and bell button. I also post a lot of behind the scenes and smaller scale projects as Ethan Carter Designs on Instagram and I would love to have you follow me there as well. I guess there's really only one thing left to do, a quality control inspection. Alright guys, that's a wrap. I'm just kidding, it's delicious. I'll see you guys on the next one.